being baptized in the Holy Spirit is not about speaking in tongues. Let me say that again. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is not about speaking in tongues. The supernatural act of speaking in an unknown language was not the focus of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, being baptized with the Holy Spirit pointed to something new, something that God was doing in a very big way. This supernatural act telegraphed to the apostles and the Jewish believers that God was forming one family whose members were anyone, be it Jew or Greek, who embraced Jesus as Lord. So the baptism of the Spirit has never been a secondary experience evidenced by the speaking of tongues that Christians should seek after salvation. This baptism with the Spirit is something that happens to everyone who is saved when they believe, when they turn their faithfulness to Jesus, when they embrace Him as Lord. But, and this but is big, this baptism with the Holy Spirit in the first century was a major turning point in God's dealing with humanity. To first century believers, it signaled something new. The idea of being baptized with the Holy Spirit first appears in the Gospels. That is the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All three writers say exactly the same thing. Mark records it this way when he has John the Baptist saying this, I have baptized you with water, but he, that is Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This prophetic statement by John the Baptist is confirmed just before the resurrected Jesus ascends to heaven. Jesus tells his followers not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. He then tells them, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then, right on cue, the Holy Spirit came like a rushing mighty wind on the day of Pentecost. Luke records what happens next to these 120 disciples who were awaiting the coming of the Spirit. This is what he writes. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they start speaking in other tongues. Well, what is happening? What's going on here? Well, remember, and this is important, remember, this day is the Feast of Pentecost, a major Jewish holiday, and thousands of Jews from nations all around Israel have come to Jerusalem for this feast. Now, these Jews, they've been living in these other nations for generations, and they speak different languages, and yet, on this day, they are dumbfounded to hear the followers of Jesus, that is those 120, speaking in their native tongue. Luke records again, Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together. That is the sound of the rushing mighty wind, the sound of the Holy Spirit coming in. And they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. The disciples were speaking in tongues, meaning that they were speaking in various languages of those who had come for Pentecost. They were preaching the gospel to Jews from all over the world, and these Jews were hearing the good news in their native tongue. And thousands of these people would commit their lives to Jesus on that day. And here's what's important. They would eventually return to the nations from which they came, where they lived, where they had been scattered century earlier, and now generations of them living there. They would return back to their home, back to these nations, bringing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, back to these people, both Jew and Gentile. Here is something you need to keep in mind. Pentecost launched the reclaiming of the nations disinherited by God at Babel. Let me say it one more time. Pentecost 
launched the reclaiming of the nations disinherited by God at Babel. The baptism with the Holy Spirit was connected to evangelization of Jews and Gentiles, beginning in Jerusalem and then spreading out to the known world. You've got to understand this truth because knowing this truth is critical to understanding the rest of the book of Acts. It is why Jesus told his disciples this, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This verse in chapter 1 of Acts, verse 8, it outlines the entire book of Acts. Let me put a graphic up for you so you can kind of see. It's a very simple graphic, but it gives you some idea of what Acts is showing as the gospel moves. These disciples, baptized with the Holy Spirit, that is, empowered by the Holy Spirit, they would take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, and they would begin in Jerusalem. And then from there, they would move beyond Jerusalem into the regions around Judea. And then from Judea, they would go north to Samaria. And then from Samaria, they would travel to the ends of the earth, taking the good news of Jesus Christ. But early on, these disciples believed that the gospel was really only for Israelites since the Messiah was the son of David. But it did not take long before the message of Jesus Christ was being embraced by people other than Jews. Where you first see it is that it's embraced by proselytes. Proselytes, these are Gentile converts to Judaism. Let me show you something really, really interesting. Early in the chapter of Acts, we discover that as the gospel's going out in Jerusalem, hundreds and hundreds of people are coming to faith in Jesus. The church in Jerusalem is growing exponentially. Great numbers are being added. And as a result, the leadership, that is the apostles, they're needing to expand their leadership base. So they're going to select leaders. And they ask the church, select leaders among you to help us with this expanding group. We need help. Note the leaders that are chosen. This is interesting and it's easy to overlook. Luke records, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Did you catch that? Nicholas chosen as a leader in this growing church in Jerusalem, was a Gentile who had converted to Judaism. And now he has become a follower of Jesus Christ. But listen, the gospel does not stop with proselytes. It will next be embraced by Samaritans, half-breed Jews. Again, Luke writes, now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit." But you want to know what is more shocking than Samaritans receiving the Spirit of God? It is when Gentiles begin to embrace Jesus and they too become baptized with the Holy Spirit. They receive the gospel. This happens when Peter is directed by the Holy Spirit to go to the home of Cornelius, a Roman centurion, a Gentile. But Peter at first balks. He doesn't want anything to do with that. He is then put into a trance where he sees this sheet coming down from heaven and on the sheet are all types of unclean meats, meats that any Jew by Levitical law could not eat. And he's told to eat these meats, but he refuses saying, no, I can't do it. And the Lord says, do not, do not call that is unclean what I am calling clean. And what Peter understood and would later see in great detail is that something revolutionary was happening. 
the gospel of Jesus Christ was going beyond just the proselyte, going beyond just the Samaritan. Now it was going to land fully at the doorstep of Gentiles. And so when Peter goes to the home of Cornelius, this is what Luke records. While Peter was still saying these things, that is to Cornelius and all of his family and friends, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among whom the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speak in tongues and extolling God. And then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? The validation of these conversions in the home of Cornelius, the validation was not the speaking of tongues. That was not the focus. The focus was the fact that they had received the Holy Spirit. They had been baptized in or with the Holy Spirit. The focus is they had now received the Holy Spirit because of their faith in Jesus Christ. The focus is not on tongues. Please get off that. You need to see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, coming to indwell these Gentiles. This supernatural act of speaking in a known or unknown tongue, that was not the focus. Being baptized with the Holy Spirit was demonstrating that God was doing something in a big way. For God was forming one family whose members were anyone, be they Jew or Gentile, all who embraced Jesus as Lord. This pouring out of the Spirit on all flesh was the forming of a new body. Something new, as I've said over and over again. This is what Paul meant when he wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 12. For in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. The kickstart of the church was the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost accompanied by the miraculous gifts speaking in other languages so that all of these Jews, thousands of them in attendance, could hear and understand the truth of what God was doing through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Pentecost had launched the reclaiming of the nations that had been disinherited so long ago by God at Babel, the Tower of Babel. Those that had gathered that day who responded in faith to the gospel, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They were baptized into one body and empowered by the Holy Spirit to make disciples of all people, of all nations. That reclaiming of the nations began in Jerusalem and it spread throughout the world. This is the book of Acts. This is what it's all about. People from every nation were responding to Jesus and being baptized in or being baptized with the Holy Spirit. That baptism in the Holy Spirit, the focus was not about speaking in tongues. It was all about all people who embraced Jesus as Lord, being filled with the, spout, with the Holy Spirit, empowered to make disciples of every nation. Hey, listen, I hope this has been helpful for you and thanks for coming along. Listen, if it has been helpful, take a moment, if you will, and just hit that like button. And also, I would love for you to become a subscriber as we just look at all of the great stuff that God has recorded and left for us in His Word, the Bible, the Old and the New Testament. And again, thanks so much for being a part of this video and watching. And as always, God's very best to you.